Okay, 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 okay. It's been a while. I uh, had an accident. I was involved in an accident. I was involved in an injury, uh, an injury which I sustained um, at work. And it's been over a week now. And um, end result, so far it seems I have a ruptured quad um, and I have a ventral hernia. So I'm going to have to have surgery for the ventral. I just saw that guy today. Man, I have had um, been x rayed twice, MRI twice, and tomorrow I have a CAT scan. So just in the past week and a half, two weeks. Yeah, we can, well, since the accident, we can have whatever. Almost. Anyway, I'll get into it later. Uh, it'll eat up too much time right now. You know how I am. I'll start meandering off on a whole bunch of uh, diatribe of explanation and such, and uh, and it's kind of a sore subject with me anyway. Right this minute, both uh, uh, figuratively and and, and uh, literally. Um, Brother Jason, Brother Jason wanted to know. Um, and I've covered this before, but I'm going to cover it again. I think it bears repeating. Brother Jason wanted to know, how much protein can he eat per city uh, without, you know, without it being a useless endeavor? And he's read places different numbers, like 30 grams per sitting, uh, 40 grams per sitting, whatever have you, 25 grams. Uh, I think he mentioned 30, but I've seen all kinds of different propositions. Now the reality is, and this is the reality, not my opinion of, the, of what reality is, it's the reality. The, the reality is we don't really know. We don't really know. But I'll add that hasn't stopped people from making gains in spite of that, right? So how important is, are some of these details? Well, this one, there's a minimal, uh, minimal amount of information that you need to be aware of and consider when deciding how much you can or you should be eating every meal. But, um, yeah, but there's so much, it's so complicated and it's overly complicated. And you really don't need to be overly complicated. But there are some sidebar uh, tidbits of information here uh, along this, this topic that you can use in many other ways. So let's see if we can get into some of that without me uh, missing. Uh, any of the pieces. Um, so first of all, let's pretend. Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you right now, I think you can, most of your time, you should base your meals around 50 or 60 grams of meal. If you're really trying to put size on, of protein, yes, per meal. Uh, if you're really trying to put the size on, and that's considering that I'm going to be con consistently eating every two, two and a half hours, uh, one through three hours, you know, if I were really trying to get there, two, two and a half hours, I'm going to eat something. Now that means my, my larger feedings are going to be, I'm saying, 50, 60 grams per meal of protein. Uh, if I'm eating literally every two hours, there may be uh, meals in between the bigger meals that are going to be less, some of the meals. Um, but the, you're always going to be looking at about at least 30 grams per meal, 40 grams per meal, you know, sometimes 50 or 60 grams per meal. Uh, so having said that, that's where I'm at. That's my thought process. And if I'm trying to really get lean, I will consume more protein because protein is the most thermogenic macronutrient. And when you bombard your body, see, I can, I can make gains, like mad gains. And I know you can't tell by looking at me now, right? Because at first I had to uh, COVID stuff that I was out of the gym for so long that I got back in the gym for a little while, started to look a little better, and now I have these injuries and I'm completely out again. So it's totally screwed up. Um, not happy about that. But I can typically make really good muscular gains on 300 grams of protein a day, and that's considering my size, my body weight, blood volume generally, and um, that, that I, I, I use digestive enzymes and all the other shit. Um, now, if I were trying to get lean and I don't want to lose any muscle and maybe even gain a little bit of muscle as I'm you know, proceeding along, which is certainly possible because 
muscle memory, all kinds of other things. I've been so much bigger, I'll never be that much bigger again, et cetera, et cetera. We don't need to continue to get into it. But uh, then I need more protein. So I can make really good gains in a, if I'm trying to put on mass. If I'm trying, okay, I'm not just maintaining or screwing around or floating around or flirting around. I'm really trying, I'm dedicated, I have a course of direction that I'm on from this day to this day and I want to gain mass, I'm going to be eating 300 grams a day. Um, and I do quite, quite nicely with that. I'll make steady, consistent gains. Uh, now, if I want to get lean and I'm dead serious, like maybe I'm getting ready for a show, if, if that were to happen, or if I were just dead serious that I got to get, I want to get really lean and I want to do it um, the most effective and efficient way possible, then the protein has to come up. I need more protein. Then I need my protein to be about 60 percent of my daily intake in totality. Yeah, so why do I need the protein higher? Um, well, I would probably run, if I were really trying to get super lean, I would be running 350 grams a day. And maybe I might hit 400, maybe. And this isn't, look, this isn't permanent. This isn't long-term. This is a short-term dietary approach, and I would get uh, burn off a whole lot in that little bit of time. Because, like I said, protein is the most thermogenic macronutrient and if I oversaturate my body with so much more protein than it actually needs, uh, the body still has to deal with all that excess protein. Let's figure out what the hell to do with it. And believe it or not, at that pace, the value, the caloric value that's available in an excess protein is exceeded by the effort, the amount of effort um, to, to to, uh, to, to masticate, to, to, you know, to, to digest and eat and absorb, um, and, and just, um, just for, for my body to metabolize all this excess protein, it requires more calories than what's available in that protein. You understand, so you're actually digging yourself a hole. I mean, you can feel it. When you get cranked up to that point, you can feel it. It's not like some ethereal, idea that you, you can't really grab but it sounds good, no, you'll feel it. You walk around, you're burning up, you feel hot, you feel that increased metabolism because it's, it's constantly going on trying to deal with all this excess protein. Um, so how much can you absorb or how much should you be eating in a sitting? Well now, here's where it gets complicated. Protein have, there are so many ways they measure the quality of protein or the value uh, from a biological standpoint, the worth of, of various proteins, okay? They have the old school protein efficiency ratio approach, which in Canada is still the gold standard um, by their equivalent of FDA or whatever they have. Uh, the protein efficiency ratio rates proteins in a manner that considers how much lean mass is gained per gram of that protein. And then it goes on to figure it out. And you would have, and then you have, um, you also have to consider digestibility and assimilation factors and ratings, ratios. All these things to differentiate between proteins. That's why there's a difference. That's why it makes a difference whether you're uh, consuming whey, some kind of a um, processed whey protein, or you're considering you're having uh, egg, or you're having beef, or you're having chicken, or you're having fish, right? And all of these proteins are at different places on these rating systems. No matter how you rate them, they're all coming in in different places. They're not tied. They're not equal. So when you're saying, say you pretend that 30 grams is the actual limit, which it is not, and they don't know what the limit is, but let's pretend that, that we know and it's 30 grams. Well, if I want to have that 30 grams, I want to get all of my 30 grams, how much of the protein do I have to eat to have that left over? Because I'm going to lose so much in digestion anyway. So then I look at assimilation rates, ratings. And an egg is like 80 something percent or just about 80 percent assimilable. I'm not looking. This is off the top of my head because I remember this shit from back in the day. Um, so your chart would look something like from top to bottom you would have egg and then you would have milk and then you would have um, egg, milk, dairy, yeah, egg, 
dairy, fish, poultry, beef. All right, and then it continues to drop on down. So while beef is nutritionally dense, if I'm gonna lay out plates here on this table and I'm gonna put egg on one, I'm gonna set some dairy in front of me on another in a glass or whatever, and next to that, I'm going to have some poultry. Next to that, I'm going to, or I'm going to have some fish, then I'm going to have some poultry, then I'm going to have some beef. What's that going to look like on these plates? For me to get my 30 grams worth, if 30 grams is the magical limit, how much, since beef is so far down the chain, even though it's so much more nutritionally dense, how big of a piece of beef do I have to eat for there to be 30 grams available after we consider what's lost in just assimilation or which can, that which cannot be assimilated because we measure this in percentages. The percentage of that protein that's deemed to be assimilable, you know, is it, uh, you know, if egg is 80 and if beef is 40 something, um, high 40s or whatever it might be, then certainly I have to have, if I have 30 grams of egg, it's only 80 some percent, low 80s, okay? So then do I have to make that up and have an extra egg with that? Do you understand? So the 30s left, right from the jump, knowing, knowing going in what we know. Um, when I get to the beef, if it's only rated at 40 something or like 50, um, if it only has a, 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 a PER of something like that, then do I have to eat, you know, like double that? Do I have to eat like if I want 30 grams available, do I need to consume 60 grams? Are you following me? I mean, you can Google and read all the shit and look at these charts and then figure for yourself what makes sense to you or rings true to you. So the first thing I would say, if I can only have 30 of the sitting, then I want to say, well, well, from what source? Because it'll be different depending on my source. It changes. You can't ignore that. Then the next thing is, is the subject we're considering, does this person consume digestive enzymes? Is this a healthy person with no digestive issues or is this someone that already has no digestive issues? Is this, um, are they washing this shit down with a whole bunch of water? Are they consuming it with other foods? And what foods are they consuming it with? Because it's like whey, which isn't even naturally occurring when we're considering processed whey proteins. Um, if you were to have a protein shake of whey, if you drink it with milk, with just regular milk, because of the casein and the casein in the milk, you're going to slow down the digestion of the whey. And kids, here's the real tricky thing in a mind blower. We think whey gets in the bloodstream 15 minutes, 20 minutes, right? Really fast, like whey isolate or something. Well, whey, just let's say whey, not isolate, whey. Whey takes like an hour and a half to digest before it's completely digested. I know everybody out there say, oh, that's bullshit, that's wrong. Yeah, well, you better read some more. Okay, so, that, and also, the next thing we have to consider is if we have a slow protein, it takes a long time to digest, like hours, then isn't it more of a trickle as far as the protein absorption rate in through, through the intestines and such, and some through the stomach, but mostly through the intestines? Isn't it more of a trickle? Do you think it's like a gate that collects all the protein that's ready to be digested, to be absorbed, and then it just hits a magic number and opens and releases it? No. So you're, you're slower digesting foods, slower digesting proteins that take hours to digest. Does that still only limit me to 30? So 30 grams over what period of time? So there's so much to consider. So my advice would be, don't overcomplicate it. You know, the best minds and the greatest minds in the field, they don't know for a fact. Nobody knows for a fact. There's all kind of weird shit happens like when you cook certain proteins. Some proteins are more assimilable. It increases the assimilable ratio, assimilation ratio of certain proteins when you cook them. Eggs is one. Uh, more assimilable, cooked and raw. Other, there are other proteins that are less assimilable when you cook them than if you had eaten them raw. Uh, and this baffles, they don't know why then. There are other things besides the protein that's in the food substance that you're eating, that's in the food. And there are, you know, on the side, there are like tannins and other things that are in there that when you cook them, because of these ingredients that are also there present, these substances, they are what does damage to the protein, and denaturing is not damaged by the way denaturing is making it even more assimilable. So it's these other things that we don't even consider that are present in this food that are alongside this protein, that in some cases they will actually damage the protein and diminish the amount that's gonna be available when you consume it through cooking, but not all proteins. Some cooking increases, 
Some cooking decreases. So it, it, it's so much, we just don't know. Even now, as much as people have studied and researched and everything, we really do not know. It's all just a bunch of proposition and, and, and conjecture, you know. And there's a lot of evidence in every direction, but there are many opinions. But the overall truth is we really don't know. So I would say go ahead and eat your uh, 50 grams a meal, 40 gram meals, good, 50 gram meals, good. Not have no problem going over 30 grams. That's bullshit. Total bullshit. Yeah. Proof is in the pudding. Application. Demonstration. That's where you, you, you judge something for yourself. Um, what happens if you actually are eating a little bit too much protein because you decided to eat 60 grams in a meal or 50 in a meal and you can only digest 30. What, you can only absorb 30, which is total bullshit. But because again, I already told you all different proteins, different ratios, what protein you're talking about, you know, et cetera, et cetera. What are you eating it with, in conjunction with, that has an influence on it, all this other shit, right? Um, but let's say that you're eating a little bit too much. What happens to the rest of it? Does it make you fat? I'm sorry, but it just doesn't. The more you overeat a protein, um, the more assured you can be, it's not gonna make you fat. What it's gonna do, even though there are calories present in the protein, it's going to just turn you into like a thermogenic incinerator. It literally does when you really overeat protein. But you don't need to do that to get huge. To get huge, you need less protein than you do to really get ripped. My way, because I don't diet down with the starvation method. Castaway forma dieting, where people just continually cut calories in, cut calories in other places through other means, but not coming down my neck. Those calories don't get cut. Ideally, I diet on the same amount of calories that I've been balking on. I don't change the caloric intake, I only change the macro ratios, and I change the food choices. The food choices, lots more fiber to get lean, lots less fiber, simpler, more readily digestible foods to get big. And it makes a huge, tremendous difference. It, is all, it works. I've proved it works, everybody knows it works. I'm not the only one, someone taught me you know what I mean? So it's not new. Anyway, that's what I got for you. So I hope that clears it up some. Don't get caught up in, in, and hit these ruts in the road that are just small little, you know, um, minute details that people like to banter about and everything. Just go ahead and eat your protein. Get your protein in there. If you're trying to get huge, depending on what you weigh, if you're about a 200 pound guy, get your, get your 250, 300 grams of protein a day and uh, you tell me that you don't make better progress. So some people may say, oh, well, that's because of the increase in the calories and why you gotten bigger. Okay, well then what happens when I really, really turn the protein up and experience a greater increase of calories from the protein, okay? Because overall they're gonna be the same. A uh, greater increase from the protein and I actually get leaner from it. What's going on there? Thermogenesis is what's going on. So don't overcomplicate it. Just worry about what you're trying to do right now and bang on. It's in the doing that you learn. The doing, not the reading, you know. So best of luck. Go get something to eat. Don't neglect your carbs. Don't neglect your carbs. See you guys later.